Hello, water me. Um, again, I just wanted to talk about one very important uh, resource that SIGCHI has, and it's a page for advice on those who are organizing SIGCHI-sponsored conferences. Now, uh, if you're a general chair, if you're thinking being a general chair or conference chair uh, for SIGCHI conference, it has about 40 sections, uh, which is broken down into about five subsections. Um, and this covers everything from when you're starting out, when you're thinking about doing preliminary approval or what's called a PAF form with the ACM, uh, through to some general considerations that you want to be very mindful of, uh, along with planning the conference, and then also thinking about what you want to do when the conference is over. Um, so there's still work to be done even when the conference is finished. Um, so depending on the scale of the conference, this can be years of planning that you need to be aware of these 40 different pieces of advice. Um, but you might be doing a smaller specialized conference, in which case you maybe only have you know 18 months to two years to think about it. Um, so before even starting out, there's about 20 sections in that guide, which talk about, uh, makes you think about the ACM SIGCHI statement on inclusion. That's a core principle of SIGCHI. So you need to read that and understand what that means and how you would translate that into action. And then around that, you'll see lots of advice around accessibility and thinking about planning for the venue, uh, thinking about issues around publications, uh, about diversity and inclusion, about budgets, about space. Um, and when I look at that guide, um, I don't see just a lot of text and a lot of bureaucracy. I see the people who went before me and others who wrote that. Uh, so when I, when I read the guidelines on uh, like uh, how to handle uh, the, the provision of, let's say, uh, bathrooms at SIGCHI conferences, um, I think back to the time when people like Alison Druin and uh, John Hardy um, got together with other volunteers to help. Uh, when I look at the set and to author those sections of the guide, uh, and when I look at, at a lot of material on, let's say, accessibility, I think about the uh, work that, let's say, people like Jen Mankoff and uh, the SIG um, Kai Access community did that informs that, along with the SIG um, Access folks as well, which is a different SIG than SIG Kai. Um, but of course, all of these things, like I look at the section on the benefits um, of being uh, an ACM SIGCHI sponsored conference. And I look back and I can see people like Philippe Palanc or even uh, information around communications and social media. And I can see people like Regina Bernhout. So when I see that, I don't see bureaucracy. I see people because that's what makes SIGCHI and what makes CHI work are all the people who've put in time and energy and thinking and effort as volunteers into making this kind of information accessible and available. And the current generation of people are doing the same thing. It's ever advancing, it's ever improving. And that's what's nice about working in this conference. But if you're gonna do this, you need to be aware that all this material is there. So when you read these documents and you read this advice, that's my mother-in-law going by, and um, when you read this, uh, this advice, don't think of it as uh, bureaucracy, just think of it as the hundreds or possibly even thousands of volunteers who come before you who want to help you do um, the best conference organization that you can possible. And uh, within that, I would say that it's worth, it's worth reading because there, there's just a lot of information in there. So if you have a look at the blog post that goes along with this video, you'll see some of the things that I point out. And, if you've never realized that there's this guide there, just understand that this, this one guide points out to all of these other policies around uh, the, within the ACM around language and around publications and around templates. And, and this points up to the ACM planning guide, which is another huge document that has 80 or 100 sections in it that talks about VAT and insurance and um, how to make sure you're, you're dealing with contracts properly and not employing people because we're all volunteers doing this work. So this one little document that a lot of people have contributed to over many, many years is a, is a great resource that we have that points out to lots of other pieces of useful information. So have a look at the blog post and get some ideas as to if you're organizing a conference, what's involved. And if you're just interested in volunteerism in general, just, you know, where the work is actually um, involved, because it's it's not just the general chair's responsibility. And um, that whole document, for example, recently we passed it over to the web chair and say, look, please read through this again. Are we are we missing anything? It's everyone's responsibility who's involved in the organization of a conference like Kai or any conference to be aware of uh, lots of these things. Um, so yeah, hopefully this is a, an interesting uh, video for you, uh, and also just some pointers to to, to this particular guide. Uh, I'll do another one of these. Um, 
digging into something a little bit more Kai specific and I'll also be uh, hopefully interviewing some of my fellow volunteers so you get other people's perspectives, not just my voice, because um, there are many, many voices in this. It takes a, it takes a village to make Kai go. So take care and um, see you at the next video and leave comments or uh, send me messages if you, there's other things that you're really interested in learning more about. Bye.